Shumai Kroiso, hello and welcome to the 65th episode of the Bluebird's Nest. Now, ni wedi cael sgwrs bach am wneud rhaglen hwn yn Gymraeg, ond ni wedi cytuno mae llawer i siarad am, felly ni yn siarad yn Saesneg. We almost decided to do this fully in Welsh, but we agreed there is lots of insight to give supporters of Alpha West County, uh, so we need everybody to hear it. So we'll stick to English, and I don't think I can talk much more in Welsh. But uh, many, perhaps, of viewers of the Boober's Nest won't know this week's guest, maybe, tends to stay out of the, the spotlight. Many of you will perhaps be more familiar with uh, your club Hall of Fame husband, but... Nowadays, you are certainly at the forefront of the list of Pemberton's leading the club. Delighted to welcome a newly announced Vice Chair of Half West County, Mrs. Marid Pemberton. Diolch yn fawr, Ryan. Thank you very much. Croeso, diolch am dod arno. Welcome. Thanks for coming on to the NAS to chat. It's quite a bit. Uh, where to begin with your journey and history with the club? I think we will have to pay reference to your history first. You've spent over over a decade as a as a supporter initially, regular at the Augie Bridge Meadow, avid supporters, alongside obviously your two daughters, watching and, and cheering on Sean. The girls have, I suppose, grown up as bluebirds, knowing no different. And as Sean retired, one Pemberton left the club, you found yourself getting involved more and more, eventually joining the board as a director. How did that all come about then, Mary? Um, well, to be honest, um, I was thinking about this the other day. Um, so when Rob took over as chairman, um, he was advertising for his board, I suppose. And I remember one night, I think Sean had just come back from training and I'd seen it on Twitter or something like that. Um, and I just, he was, I was in the kitchen, he was in the lounge and I said, oh, do you know what? I'm going to try for this. And Sean being Sean just said, all right then. And that was that really. Um, <laughs> So in terms of the discussion and what Sean thought about it, probably not a lot, you know, that's the way he is really. But in terms of my sort of reasoning why uh, to get involved, um, there's quite a few reasons probably, probably equally weighted in terms of um, all of them put together and why I sort of made that initial, sent that initial email then uh, to Rob to have a discussion. Um, Like you said, the club has been a huge part of our lives. just being there on a weekend watching Sean play. The girls loved going to watch Daddy play football and all that. Um, and obviously being there for so long, when he decided that finally he was going to hang up his boots, which was, you know, a reoccurring conversation for about five years. <laughs> um, and he's just like, I can't do it anymore. I was just like, oh, well, that's a shame because mm. we'd still probably go down. But I just felt like I couldn't leave that sort of community, I suppose. Um when he left so that was one of the reasons um the other reason is my dad was from Pembrokeshire passed away a couple of years ago loved coming down to watch the games always came to watch would go without us he would just go watch the games and and everything like that so it was really special to him and I suppose that added that sort of personal connection to myself and the family then um and then the two girls really so um Lily and Lottie are two daughters um Lottie's quite a keen footballer um you know she's a she's a defender she's a center half she's she's a little bit of of Sean in her um (laughs) and then I suppose one of the other things was you know I just wanted to show them that you don't always have to um play football to be involved in football Mm -hmm. I've never kicked a ball in my life um you know and I don't think that matters I think it's more of the sort of community aspect of football that I like sometimes Mm. I watch a little bit of the games and then get distracted talking to somebody it's not just about what goes on on the pitch it's everything around it so um so I wanted to do it for them um and to show them as well that you know obviously females in football not just playing but maybe taking you know a, a different sort of role and I suppose the last reason was um and I, oh, I don't know how best to put this, really. But when you're a mother and you work full time and you would just do everything for everybody else, sometimes you just want to do something for you. Um, yeah. And as much as every PTA, a Parent Teacher Association across the land, does a very good job, didn't really appeal to me. So um, when this opportunity came about, I was like, mm, I think I could help out. 
um it was kind of personal so mm. it made it a little bit um more appealing i suppose and I, the rest, I suppose it's history yeah definitely i love that and you know your reasoning behind it is, is sentimental as well to the family so that's awesome that and as like the role model figure as well love it so you've been a supporter for many many years have you always enjoyed watching football um well yeah so even as a sort of young child i i loved man U, and my dad took me to old trafford when i was about 10 we went on like a bus trip i went to harry robinson's for chips no back was the best <laughs> somewhere. still got the mug actually somewhere um i i didn't really understand anything do, do you know i just i just liked football i suppose when sean and i got together football was a big part of his life so it quickly became a big part of my yeah. life um and obviously sean played in Kamala's leagues and everything and um i could drive before he could drive so um i used to taxi him to games and oh you'll remember this he used to play for a local team called shanghai and they're a hell of a team actually um <laughs> they used to call the place the house of pain yeah, um, yeah. so um and I'd take him down to games um, and obviously I'd be there then watching the games and one time they didn't have a, I don't even know if they like had linesmen in those sort of games, but there was always a ref, but I don't know how anyway, they needed somebody to run the line. So I just stuck my hand up. I said, I'll do it. Well, Sean used to be a forward. So when I put, you know, put the flag up and called him <laughs> offside, you should have seen his face, he still brings it up now. Um, I didn't go for a while then. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to fight. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so football has always been something that sort of we've done uh, together um, when it was just the two of us. And, you know, now it's the four of us. And um, yeah, so that was the sort of connection with football. And now I'm on the border after West. <laughs> bad one, really. Yeah. You've come in and really made a, a huge impact. You've been heavily involved in lots of the behind-the-scenes work at the club during, you know, arguably the busiest and most successful period, a transformational period that we've gone through in the last few years. So, yeah, as I mentioned, a huge congratulations in order for your, your recent promotion to vice chair. It's a testament to the work you've been doing, I think. And obviously we say thank you to, to Julian, Julian Fern, who's been in that position previously. Wish him well. Uh, he's a previous guest on the podcast, and I'm sure he'll be very much continuing to support from afar. But yeah, you, you come into the position off the back of loads of off-field developments, and I think the uh, the biggest one is probably the worst kept secret in yeah. Wales, or Absolutely. maybe Wales, <laughs> over the last few weeks. It's uh, it's obviously you know media outlets have been reporting on it, but only just this weekend we've been able to officially announce from the club that. We are getting an artificial pitch at the Augie Bridge Meadow, hence why we've been playing at the LHP Stadium in Kamarnin. But you've been at the forefront, spearheading this project now over the last few months, dealing directly with the Cymru Football Foundation. Um, logic then, from the board perspective, what was the, the thinking behind digging up the pitch and, and installing the new surface? Um, I think from the inception of the new board and, and sort of um, Rob as chairman, it was always something that was at the forefront, really. We've got this sort of 12 point plan, really, in terms of like a strategy and, and aims of how to drive the club forward. And an artificial playing surface was always at the forefront mm. for loads of different reasons. Many people have asked me, particularly on the Bluebirds Nest Live, it almost puts me a little bit on the back foot sometimes saying, you know, we love the grass pitch. Why is this happening? And yeah, we all love the grass pitch. And if, if it was feasible and sustainable to allow, you know, the the young, you know, academy players and, and many other teams that the club hope to roll out over the next few years to go on the meadow as a grass pitch, then perhaps we wouldn't be having this conversation. But unfortunately, you know, the artificial surface, the positives probably massively outweigh the negatives. And what I really like about it, since this initial sort of overview I, I heard of a couple of months ago, you know, a real special focus on making it about girls and women's football being more accessible. That, again, is is inspirational and, and it's going to have a huge impact. So tell us a bit about that logic behind it and what it means for the club's overall vision as well then. Yeah, I think 
exactly you hit the nail on the head then two words they're feasible and sustainable and that's obviously what we want to do for the club uh, and obviously develop as well um but girls football has always been something that has been at the forefront of um sort of our vision for the for the board for the club from the board's perspective um i suppose personally i can add to that in terms of the way i've seen how girls football can really bring girls together um, mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, having a team of that um, as well as developing really good relationships, friendships through sport, through football. Um, and to have those facilities there to allow that sort of girls football and um, women's football, because that would be the, with the aim really to, to get into sort of both senior mm -hmm. and women's football um, as the um, sort of, project progresses um i've seen it with my own eyes from a personal perspective from the from my girl playing what she's getting out of that not just from a physical point of view from what everything comes with team sports um and we just really wanted that at half of the west under the half of the west umbrella to give girls in Pembrokeshire that opportunity um and you know i think the pitch is the first phase of a wider project in terms of developing um the ground really uh, with a focus on on female football um you know the girls of today could be the women's football uh, yeah. team of half west of the future so it's very much about a starting block uh, obviously we've already uh, got got a girl set up up and running which will benefit massively once the pitch is um is complete which somebody is going to ask, when is it? Coming to the <laughs> is the tagline on that one. Um, but um, we're just really excited by it. We're so grateful for the opportunity. This has been a massive collaborative effort in getting this to this point. Um, and I just want to you know, say a big thanks to the funders that you mentioned earlier in terms of um, you know, making this project a reality. Um, but going back to its priorities then, it was very much... Um, focus on that female football um, from girls all the way through to women's. Fantastic. So basically what you're saying is a chance is a Pemberton going to score ahead at the back post in the future at the Augie Bridge Meadow. There's, there's still a sliver of chance. Uh, there, uh, there, there may be. She's got a screamer of a header the other day, actually. I was thinking, oh, that's, that's your dad's girl. But yeah, uh, not my girl anyway, but yeah. No, um, do you know um, what a story that would be? But obviously... I think the the personal element that I feel towards the club has maybe helped drive that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so um, who knows what the future will have. Yeah, amazing. And you mentioned the, the future. No doubt people will be asking when we're coming back. I know they're going as quickly as they can. The grass is gone. I don't know what phase they're at now, but I'm sure people will be letting know across the social media if and when dates get announced of our return, etc. So I won't put you on the spot. We just say, watch this space. We're going as quick as we can, I guess, is it? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's really timely with this as the sort of uh, video um, that was released in terms of the announcement of, like you said, the worst kept secret ever um, <laughs> of the pitch. Um, you know, with the 125th year celebration of the club, it's really timely that this is project is now in development. Mm. And um, as we approach its completion, uh, obviously all the dates will be released in, in when we'll be playing our first um, home game then at the, at the new pitch. Um, and that will coincide really nicely with the 125th year celebration. Yeah. Definitely. We'll come on to that. I've got another question about that. But with the pitch coming in now, then, I think it's going to really open the doors on a day-to-day -day level, I think. What do you see, perhaps not just in football in terms, but the social and perhaps cultural change at the club? How, how do you think that's going to change? Definitely. So the, always the, the plan was a sort of twofold. The focus was always on girls. Uh, and then it was access to those sort of facilities uh, within the day for um, social well-being sessions, some of which we will be looking to facilitate ourselves uh, and provide provision ourselves, uh, and others, you know, will be uh, available for uh, other organisations to utilise. So it's very much um, a sort of community asset in a way as well, as much as it's an asset for us. That was really um, something that we wanted to instil um, in the um, 
project as it developed. And obviously with Harry on board now in his community manager role, um, this is something that he'd be looking at as well in, in using that with facilities. Uh, and that's all about facilities, not just the pitch in terms of like social and wellbeing um, provision to support the local community. Because, you know, the local community, I think, is is of key importance mm -hmm. to, to all of us. And I think, well, I would hope that, you know, that comes through in everything that we that we do yeah. really. Definitely. It's exciting times ahead with all of that, you know, particularly the community um, opportunities that, that lie ahead with it. And I know everybody's time has been taken up, you know, sorting this, this massive project. But as you mentioned, we have got a big celebration throughout this year. It is the 125th anniversary of the club since it was formed, 1899. I think I'm yeah. saying that. Yeah, 1899. Yeah. Let me do the math quick. Yeah. Um, it's... There's lots of stories behind it. Cardiff City, the Bluebirds, were mm -hmm. formed in the same year, but were indeed a couple of months later. So we're the original Bluebirds, and there's historical features like that to, to celebrate. And um, there's a number of events, I think, planned and initiatives that are going to be pushed. Mm. Is that sort of the next step for you then, once this ground gets signed off? Yeah, I think so. I think, um, like... The pitch has taken a lot of time and a lot of hours to to develop and get to where we are, but I'm kind of like chomping at the bit to get to something else now. Um, <laughs> so, um, the glitter for punishment, I think. But I was thinking yeah. exact same phrase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, the 125th year is a huge um, sort of milestone in the club's history. It's something that we really want to celebrate. We've got a lot of ideas, a lot of events in the, in the pipeline mm. uh, um, and so things that will be um, events for everybody to come together, I suppose, and celebrate the, uh, the 125th. But as well, really exciting new things that we could be, that we are looking at to, I suppose, secure the next 125 years of the club. So I won't say any much more on that now, uh, but... It just goes to show, really, I think, that um, we like to strive for more, I suppose. Um, and when, you know, you don't stop when one thing's sort of done. Yeah. So you just keep going on to the next. So we're always looking to, to raise the bar and um, and what the next project could be, really. Love it. Love it. Um, you say the next project, there's many things ongoing. Uh, obviously, we're playing our actual games in Camarthen, but there's still a lot going on at the club. Uh, particularly over this last fortnight as well, another community initiative with our Bluebirds Brew. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you've had a chance to go down there, but I know many support have had a chance to go and, and chat with staff from the club. It's been hosted at Get the Boys a Lift in Bridge Street in Half the West as well. So a massive thank you for those guys for hosting. Mm -hmm. But we've been offering them uh, attendees of uh, of those sessions a chance to complete the survey. Um, I'll put the link up on screen for anybody who hasn't attended who still would like to participate in this survey. But how do you see this feedback from the community impacting going forward? I think it's so important um, in terms of, first of all, getting engaged with the community, the wider community. Maybe the, the, those aren't, you know, the fans that come along to every game. And, you know, the people of Hufford West itself and the wider sort of area. Uh, and then we've got to look at how we can implement those really going forward. I think like an open dialogue is so important. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we, we, we've been pretty good at that so far in terms of like um, openly stating our intentions and, you know, having a lot of sort of community engagement uh, projects that, you know, open the club up to the community and I think what we need to do now as well is go out into the community as well so it works two ways so um I just love this Bluebirds Brew initiative because it's like the first steps really in, in continuing and starting that dialogue with the wider community and see how we can sort of go go ahead together love it love it look forward to seeing how all that data impacts future plans and future projects so yeah again exciting times with that but um with the present day i suppose then we are back at our temporary home the lhp stadium in Camarlin this weekend we face connor's key nomads in a 2 30 p.m kickoff victorious in the away tie on match day one very much remember that day fondly myself <laughs> fingers crossed uh, that match day 12 can bring us also get the three points and then match day 13's comes just three days later away to Britain Ferry so uh, in the evening at the Old Road 
Bluebirds Nest Live will return for a broadcast for that one. Anyone looking to travel, I believe there is a supporters association bus available as well. But uh, will you be attending either or both of the games? Yes, I will be there on Saturday to the game Carmarthen. Um, and I think we should, um, you know, mention thank you very much to Carmarthen Town mm. for for being our temporary home for, for this sort of period of transition for us. Um, yeah, so I will be there. I will be on the gate with Barry and Mary, and I love being there. I'm, I'm actually the worst thing about going back to the Meadows. There's not going to be any room for me. Just <laughs> a little booth with Mary because I love. I love it. But uh, yeah, we'll be there. And depending on daughter's schedules, we'll probably be there on Tuesday as well. Love it. Love it. Oh, no. oh, we're second in the league at the table at, at the moment. You know, okay. we're, I know. Yeah, I, exactly. I know you aren't one to offer so your match analysis. You're too busy chatting and socialising. I get it. But you probably leave that to Sean for his. But from a from a board perspective, and I know how hard everybody is working behind the scenes developing and, and delivering on all of these exciting projects but it must give you a smile to hear that we're second in the league uh, yeah. you know it's also going well on the pitch as well yeah. just to clarify i do know where we are in the league <laughs> and i do know it's going well <laughs> um no definitely i think um we are really really pleased with how this the start of the season has gone i'm sure everybody is in terms of um, staff players and everything what you just said there in terms of, you know, off the pitch, I think we're making strides uh, and on the pitch as well. Uh, and I think everything is sort of going in the right direction. Um, you can see the sort of um, togetherness in the team. You know, so it's a young team as well um, mm. in terms of the amount of local players that are, that are there as well. And that is something that is really important to me then in terms of, you know, that sort of pathway through the academy to the first team. But yeah, it's really, really good to see and encouraging to see how well the um, the team are doing. Second, the league, um, like you said, it's been a roller coaster in the last sort of four years. Was <laughs> <laughs> I've been been involved? So um, yeah, both on and off the pitch are looking very yeah. bright at the moment. Long may it continue. Fingers crossed. Yes. Um, I said this last week. I've gone through all my bullet points very much like Harry last week. I feel like I've absolutely grilled you with uh, with some of these questions. But it's been really good to get that insight into the developments, how things have happened and are going to happen going forward. So, Dioch, thank you for joining me. Uh, best of luck, I suppose, for your well as you continue in your role as as vice chair. And thank you. I'll see you Saturday at the LHP. You will. Thank you, Ray.